And I think I got that going. So my name is Brad Waldschmidt. I'm a consultant that works with the Nashville Department of Transportation, uh, assisting with their traffic calming program. And I'm here with Ariana. Ariana. Hi everyone, I'm Ariana. I work with Brad and we're a consultant for NDOT. And so we're here today um, to present to you about the uh, traffic calming program and propose some ideas that we have for the streets in your neighborhood. Yeah, so thanks Ariana. So um, what we're hoping to work with you all today or kind of present to you is sort of give an overview on the traffic calming program, uh, talk about how NDOT actually reviews the applications and selects uh, streets to enter the program, talk about some of the options and some of the more of the common options that NDOT uh, usually designs and installs on neighborhood streets for traffic calming. And then we do have a concept design that we've prepared. It's not by no means final, but we do have a concept design that we're happy to kind of share with you on the back end of the presentation, which is maybe about a 10 or 12 minute presentation. Um, we understand there's definitely going to be some questions. We want to ask if you'll ask questions in one of two ways. The first is if you'd be willing to wait toward the end of our 10 to 12 minute presentation. We're going to stick around as long as you all want uh, so we can make sure we're helping answer some things or communicating items. The second option is if you like on the bottom right corner, uh, there should be a chat box. Uh, you're happy to input questions in the chat box if you prefer. Either one, we're going to make sure we get those questions and answer them. Um, and before we get going, I want to recognize Councilmember Benedict. Councilmember Benedict, is there anything you'd like to kind of kick us off with before we get going? Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. And hey, everybody, thanks for joining the call. Glad that we're recording this for me to push out. Um, and uh, this is traffic calming is the highest priority topic in our district. Many of you have heard me say that you guys have been looking for this um, project in particular for more than a, a year or two at least. Um, and that's not uncommon. We have um, uh, the city has rather over 400 calming requests. And just in this latest round, out of the 24 that were awarded countywide, District 7 got three of them. So we're really making some progress on some of the most dangerous residential neighborhood streets um, in the city, and RD is uh, one of those. So um, this is the second of three meetings this week that Brad and I are working on to get these launched. And so they've, ta they've taken on a lot at once, and we'll talk about a timeline in a bit. But... I can't wait to get something something implemented here, whatever it turns out that you guys want that to be. I know that we need folks to slow down. So, again, thanks for um, being here, and I look forward to seeing what uh, Brad comes up with and what you guys uh, feel comfortable with adopting. All right, thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much. And one last question before we get going. Or, sorry, we would like to ask people if they're comfortable in the chat box, if you could simply uh, type in your, your street address. Um, we're, we'd like to know how many people in the meeting tonight actually live on RD Avenue um, or, or some people who just may be interested in the neighborhood. So if you'd be willing to, uh, to that does kind of helps NDOT know um, how many people are here, but also how many people are on RD Avenue or at the meeting. Um, so Ariana, if you'd like to go ahead and get started, I'm going to try to make sure I got the technology right. Is the screen showing up again? Yes, I can see it. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and let you get going. All right. Well, thanks everyone for um, coming in. I know it's kind of hard on a weeknight making dinner and getting off work, um, but we really appreciate you taking the time to join us here. Um, so first off, I know the concept of traffic calming can be a little bit confusing, so we kind of want to unpack that a little bit. Um, so we like to say we have three E's of traffic calming, and these are basically the three branches that we like to go into. Um, so the first is education. So that's going to be um, programs like this where um, we're taking the time to educate you about what traffic calming is, but also we want to open the floor for the residents of these streets to educate us about what you're seeing and the conditions that are happening every day in your local area. Um, the second is enforcement. So that's obviously, you know, having police officers out there um, writing tickets, but we know that our Metro Police Department is very, very booked right now. So um, the third thing that we like to go into is engineering. So um, we would like to come up with solutions that can possibly help to alleviate some of these traffic calming issues without relying solely on um, enforcement. So again, what is traffic calming? Well, we like to focus on residential streets. So we're not going to be implementing anything on I-65, for example, even though 
obviously the traffic on there is a whole situation in and of, of itself. Um, we're focusing on residential streets and we like putting in physical solutions. We found that we get the best results when there's something physical in the road that um, you actually have to see and drive over and then that can have the best impact um, for what we want in your neighborhood. And so the point is to reduce speeds and we really wanna encourage low speeds over significant lengths. So not just slowing down once you get to a stop sign, but slowing down continuously throughout the street that we're applying traffic calming to. So what is the neighborhood street traffic calming program? Um, like the name suggests, we are a street program, not a neighborhood program. That's kind of been a recent change um, in our program requirements. So this is really focusing on um, one specific uh, road that we've targeted based on data. And we know that this road is gonna be you know, higher priority for us to um, apply our engineering practices to. Um, so that just allows us to be able to fully put all of our resources on these problem areas rather than spreading ourselves too thin. And so outside of the traffic calming program, um, we have a couple of resources for you and these typically do come up a lot in these neighborhood meetings. So the first one is gonna be Hub Nashville, which I hope you all have heard of before. Um, so this is gonna be the place where if you see any sort of maintenance issues in your area, if you're wondering about um, implementing a stop sign in a certain area, um, you can go on Hub Nashville and submit a request and it'll get in touch with the right department of NDOT um, just to make sure that your, response, your questions and your concerns are being heard by the correct ears. Um, another resource that we wanna go into is walk and bike. Um, so Ms. Anna Dearman, she's the walking and biking manager. So if you have any concerns about getting bike paths in your neighborhood or um, something to do with sidewalks, she would be your best point of contact for that. And then we do also have our beautification commission. Um, so the commission coordinator is JD Lane. And so if you have any concerns about um, just general beautification in your neighborhood, this would be a better resource for you to contact. So um, as the councilwoman said previously, this is a high demand program we received uh, 462 applications for neighborhood streets. And um, we actually ended up selecting 24 neighborhood projects. And I believe that was 26, 27 streets. So um, it is a very selective program and we do that intentionally so that we can best serve the highest priority streets. Thanks, Ariana. So RD Avenue was one of those 426 streets. Uh, and so like all the other streets, uh, NDOT, the, we, we look at a lot of data on the streets. We look at uh, something called neighborhood destinations. You know, are there schools and parks and churches that people are gonna be walking to? Um, active transportation is, are there sidewalks on the street or if there's no sidewalks, are, does that mean people are having to walk in the road? And that's something we absolutely take into consideration. We also look at crash history, you know, how many crashes are happening uh, along the streets. And we, as you can see, 50% uh, is the measured speeds, you know, how fast are cars typically going above the posted speed limit? Um, th th these factors get looked at for every street, and this is the uh, the process through which RD Avenue was selected, and that's why we're here today. Um, so RD Avenue, we're talking about the stretch uh, between Gallatin Pike and McGavick Pike. Um, and here's sort of a map I know uh, you all live in this area. You know where your neighborhood is, as we just like to put a map up there because we're traffic engineers. But yeah, so it's, a, it's this entire stretch of already between Gallatin and McGavick. And like I mentioned, we have developed a kind of an initial concept design that we'll get to a little later just to kind of show what traffic calming could possibly look like. Um, so again, you got the signal at Gallatin, uh, the all-way stop at Kennedy, and then it you know, kind of ends there at McGavick Pike. Um, again, you all know your street, you live on here, but we like to make sure we sort of over communicate on sort of what we're looking at here. So RD Avenue, what are some of the, the typical traffic calming measures? Well, the one I'd say most common one that end up, we look at is something called speed cushions. It's uh, these black rubberized products that are made and built so that cars can go over them and withstand the impact of cars going over them. Um, you can kind of see that they kind of elevate up and elevate down. Um, usually the, the middle is about three inches off the pavement. So if you're wondering how high these are off the pavement, they're about three inches 
uh, off the pavement. But these are examples of uh, traffic calming that many neighborhood streets that want traffic calming, uh, we end up looking at and designing for. Um, there are some other options and we wanna make sure we go through those as well. Um, one is signage and markings. Sometimes we do uh, look to radar feedback signs where you got the speed limit sign and you've got that sort of digital sign that flashes your speed at you um, or any motorist if that motorist is exceeding the posted speed limit. Um, so that is one method of traffic calming that sometimes we do look at. Um, another option is narrowing. If you can imagine the left photo here without any pavement markings, it would be sort of a wider amount of pavement, um, maybe a little more tempting for cars to think they have a lot of pavement, but even just throwing some of the, the white lines and the, and the yellow lines down uh, kind of narrows uh, where the cars feel like, the motorists feel like they're supposed to be driving. That can actually have a positive impact on traffic calming and reducing speeds a little bit. So sometimes we do look at that, that option as well for streets that maybe are a little wider and have a little more pavement um, on their street. Um, similar to speed cushions, this is another option, speed tables. Um, you can tell that, that one kind of thing crosses the entire road. It's a lot bigger. Um, typically, NDOT likes to prefer the speed cushions. I'm gonna go back because there are, you can kind of see there's some gaps in the middle here. Uh, and those gaps allow for emergency vehicles such as fire trucks and ambulances, which have a little wider wheelbase than most passenger vehicles. It has less of an impact on emergency vehicles um, when they're speed cushions compared to a speed table um, where they're definitely going to have to go over them just like a passenger vehicle would. The gaps lessen that impact to an emergency vehicle's tires a little bit. Um, so that's, but that, the tables are an option and we do occasionally look at those. Um, another option is the neighborhood traffic circles. Um, it's sort of like a roundabout, uh, but on a much smaller, smaller scale. Um, one of the typical challenges we see is that in the, in the traffic calming program, we are, we are not looking to widen the road. We're not looking to, you know, buy anybody's property or right away. So a lot of times uh, neighborhood intersections don't really have enough room for a traffic circle. Um, and we're not, and we're not going to be widening through this traffic calming program. So a lot of times that rules traffic circles out. It is something we can take a look at, but oftentimes, especially when we're trying to make sure that school buses can make turns around the circle without you know running off the pavement. A lot of times we find it challenging uh, to fit these in there, but it is an option. We wanted to make sure we sort of talk about that as the, in the toolbox. And a, a last option here is something called chicanes. You can see on the left, pavement markings are being used where if you're driving, you kind of got to turn your steering wheel left and right. And on the right side on that little schematic, you can see there's actually physical things that are being built, again, to make people turn so it's not just going straight, which can sometimes encourage a little more uh, speeding for people who want to maybe be going faster than they should. So that's just an example of some of the tools. Um, I want to get to the program flowchart right here. Uh, you know, we talked about the application the prioritization. Uh, we're here at meeting number one. That's the red one or the orange one that we're here at. Um, the next steps for us after this meeting is going to be to kind of finalize that design, have a second meeting, and uh, and at the second meeting, we'll go through a more detailed design. And then after that design, one, after the second meeting, we'll do something called an online ballot. Um, and if the ballot's successful, then NDOT will order the materials to construct it. So the ballot, this is something where NDOT, with your help through these meetings, we prepare a traffic calming design. But whether or not it gets built is up to the property owners on our new avenue. And so what's going to happen is uh, once the design is finalized, which we're not there yet, right, we're at meeting one. Um, and I apologize, if someone's uh, on their phone, would you mind muting, please? I, just, I, I appreciate it. Um, but so after the second meeting, this is the first meeting, after the second meeting, then NDOT will send out ballots over U.S. mail, um, that, which can allow for voting online or over the telephone. And... You'll be voting, if you're a property owner on RD Avenue, you'll have the opportunity to vote on whether you want traffic calming or not. And if two thirds of the people that respond uh, vote yes, then the, the traffic calming is gonna get installed. If not, then it's gonna be determined that there was not a sufficient number and uh, NDOT may look at some alternative uh, solutions. Um, but so that's what the new ballot process um, 
and that's what will happen. This is like several weeks or months in the future. We're not there yet. Just want to give everybody an understanding that ultimately the people that are directly adjacent to the property, or, excuse me, if your property is directly adjacent to RD Avenue, um, those are the property owners that are going to have the vote. Um, and you'll be able to vote for or against the plan. Um, but that's sort of the new ballot process for what's the final determination on whether traffic calming happens on RD Avenue. It, it's this right here, and it's, it's going to be up to the property owners uh, to vote. Um, so concept design, I just want to present real quick what an example of maybe a design could look like on RD Avenue um, conceptually. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Excuse me, I'm going to turn the presentation off. Um, and I'm going to bring this up. So, Ariana, I just want to check, are you able to see sort of an existing conditions slide here? I want to make sure it's working. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, I just want to make sure. So, um, this graphic represents, I'm going to call it West RD Avenue. I'm going to say the section between the Gallatin Pike traffic signal and that always stop at Kennedy. Um, so, for this section, what you could expect to see on a concept design, perhaps, for traffic calming, would essentially be some speed cushions, uh, just like the photo example in that upper right corner. And with the distance, you could probably expect to see maybe four locations of those speed cushions. Now, we, ch we, we, we designed that number because if we design too few, maybe one or two locations, then it can allow the motorists that want to speed a longer distance where they could really kind of try to go a little faster in between. But if we were showing six or eight, um, that would just be a little too much. Um, it, it would sort of be in the opposite direction. It would be too much. So um, the, the distances are usually what we're trying to focus on to try to find that sweet spot. So this is an example of what a design could look like for sets of speed cushions between Gallatin Pike and Kennedy. Now I'm gonna flip real quick and then we're almost ready for questions. I'm gonna flip now to, to, to I'm gonna call it RD Avenue East. Uh, between the Kennedy Avenue Allway stop and then McGavick Pike. It's about the same distance as the previous, the West one. Um, so again, uh, I think you all could expect to see maybe four locations of speed cushions, just based on that spacing, I'm not trying to put them away too far away, but also not too close. Um, so this would be an example of um, what end up, what we would kind of be thinking about. This is by no means final. We're happy to answer questions or if there's any uh feedback in, in the positive or in the negative. We, that's what we want to hear. This is just sort of our first attempt to put something in front of you and then kind of help you see what something could look like. Um, a final design, which would be at a second meeting in the future, it would be more detailed than this. We would show a zoomed in version. We would show each one of these proposed locations. What street number is it in front of? So it's going to show a lot more detail when we get to that second meeting so everyone can understand where are these in relation to my driveway and things like that. Um, but we just want to kind of present that. And I'm going to close out real quick on the presentation and just say Gil Thomas is with NDOT. He's the program manager. My name is Brad Walchmitt. Um, I'm going to be one of the engineers working on this. And we'd love to just open up to questions. And if anybody wants to come off mute or Ariana, if you could monitor the chat box for questions, love to make sure we're hearing from everybody. I'm just going to, can I just start talking? Absolutely, Doug, go for it. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Ariana. I really uh, appreciate it. I've um, gotten some feedback from some of the neighbors and I think like number one, on that list, we have a, uh, you, you kind of pointed it out, Kennedy Ave <clears throat> is a problematic point in the street. Um, and that includes a couple things such as a bus stop and it is a school zone. And we have quite a few walkers up to the school as well. Like do these, uh, many people have sort of voiced the concern that that stop sign is a bit of, a bit more of a suggestion to some folks. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ways that you might be able to, um, I don't know, a bigger stop sign feels like a bad idea, but are there ways where you can almost like lean into that stop sign being a little bit more of a, a feature of the street? Because that's essentially becomes a nice speed cushion um, with a full stop there. Right. Yeah, Doug, I appreciate that. One, one thing I would do like to communicate is that stop signs are good for traffic control to direct who has the you know, right away. Stop signs are not always a good traffic calming measure. 
Um, and so when sometimes we do get asked, hey, can you put up some more stop signs to slow down traffic? And that's usually not something we do. I know that's not what you're asking, Doug, but I do like want to take that opportunity to sort of mention that. Um, to your point, yes, we, we do hear from neighborhoods. Sounds like Artie maybe has something similar where unfortunately some motorists treat a stop sign as a suggestion uh, rather than a requirement. Um, the traffic calming program would probably not really be doing much with the stop signs, but what we can do at NDOT is we can take that feedback and we can look at those stop signs. I was out there, I've been, I've driven the street recently. I, I cannot remember though um, the features of the stop signs. I know a stop sign's red. I know the signpost is usually silver or metal, but what I don't know is sometimes NDOT has been installing like another red sort of reflective strip on that metal pole um, so that the stop sign at nighttime kind of catches the headlights. But then instead of just a silver metal pole, it's like a, it's like a red reflective. And so Doug, full, full honesty, I cannot remember, but that's something that we could share with NDOT or better yet, that'd be a hub Nashville request that you don't even have to go through us. You could go back to the, um, if you bear with me real quick, that would be a, a wonderful uh, hub Nashville. You could say exactly what you said of, we, people seem to treat the stop sign as a suggestion, um, and if they're not out there, the red strips, could NDOT consider adding red strips just to make it more visible? That, that's something the Hub Nashville could be used for. Awesome. Thanks very much. Yes. I mean, this, this might be a dumb question, but is there any way that increased um, traffic enforcement could be a part of that as well? Is there a way to um, have, you know, officers you just place there during high traffic times, maybe as insurance? Yeah, that's a great question. And I'm going to unfortunately sidestep the question, but hopefully with a well-worded response. So at the Nashville Department of Transportation, we can absolutely control this third one E that's bolded, bolded and underlined the engineering part of it. The enforcement is absolutely important to traffic calming and even just traffic enforcement. But that is going to be more of a Metro Nashville Police Department uh, request uh, that, and not something that NDOT can really help with enforcement. So that's just the honest answer. But yeah, th that's probably the best way you'd have to go about more enforcement on your street. Brad, I'm going to I'm going to jump in and answer that. So I've been working on um, a, a multi point plan. And one of the things is it's actually based on Vision Zero and the five E's of traffic calming. And enforcement is one of those things. Um, I've got everything from making sure that branches are trimmed around signs to Doug's point, are they more visible? Um, to we're going to have speed trailers in different areas of the district. Um, enforcement is another piece of that where I have the East Precinct targeting different streets throughout the district, and they're going to be giving me monthly reporting of um, the uh, number of stops and the number of tickets given. So that's something that's coming um, over the next 12 months. I anticipate being able to report on that. I've almost got it put together and um, I'll be making an announcement about that definitely before mid-September. Excellent. Thank you, Councilmember Benedict. Ariana, I see you've got your hand raised. Yeah, um, I just wanted to address some of the comments in the chat. Um, so Denise mentioned possibly adding rumble strips at the stop sign. Would that also be um, through Hub Nashville that they could request rumble strips? You could you could request uh, the rumble strips through Hub Nashville. I'm not certain if that's something that NDOT uh, would implement uh, in that situation, but I'm not the person who would decide that. So that is absolutely a Hub Nashville uh, request that you could make. Um, I will add on, I don't think the question was, could rumble strips be used for traffic calming? But I'm gonna go ahead and answer that anyways, even though that was not the question. The, there was a time where rumble strips were sort of intended for traffic calming. And what I think NDOT found is they didn't do, deter uh, motorists that wanted to speed from speeding. And if nothing else, they sometimes created more noise uh, with the cars going over the rumble strips where some of the uh, nearby residents actually really did not like them. Uh, so that's just one thing to consider. Uh, they, they definitely can be helpful, especially on the sides of interstates and whatnot. Uh, but that's a hub nashville request uh absolutely and then we also had um perry kind of echo that rumble strip request and then he also suggested maybe adding in a speed table at the stop sign at kennedy gotcha 
So yeah, so I don't know that we put a speed table right in the intersection of Kennedy and RD. That is something that ha that sometimes it's called a raised intersection. It's really like a more of a massive speed table. That is absolutely something you see sometimes in downtown districts. Um, I think if I, one reason why we may not consider that here is because NDOT is trying to use the the money, uh, the, the the funding as eff effectively as possible. So at an always stop condition where cars should be stopping, I'm not sure they'd want to put traffic calming right in the middle of the intersection um, where cars should be stopping anyways. Which, yeah, so that's that's probably um, what why we wouldn't put them right in the middle of an always stop. Um, but I do appreciate that question. Yeah, and then we did have one more in the chat um, from Carrie. Um, would we consider lowering speed limits to 20 miles per hour? Excellent. I appreciate that question. I know there was an initiative in the past several years to lower uh, many of the residential streets from 30 posted speed to 25 posted speed. I understand the question about lowering it even further. Um, we can certainly pass that along to NDOT. I'm not sure that we would be looking to reduce uh, speed limits on speed limits on the street as part of traffic calming. There are some times on longer streets where maybe a motorist forgets what the speed limit is, where we could look at maybe adding one or two extra speed limit signs to remind them, but I'm not sure that we would be getting into lowering the speed limit through traffic calming. But I do appreciate that question, and Ariane, I think we should follow up with NDOT just to make sure um, you know, that, we're, that we're not missing something, but I'm not sure we would really be looking at that. So uh, thank you. Doug, I know you had your hand raised. Sorry, I've been taking informal polls on the walk to the school, so I have more points. Um, the other question that some folks have had, do speed cushions, it looks like we're kind of leaning into the speed cushions thing. Is that in any way affect the future possibility of sidewalks? Because this, the fight does not end here. Uh, we, we will continue on and hopefully get sidewalks someday, but it, it, do those two things interfere with each other or is it future proof to look at? Yeah, thank you for that question. I'm not, I'm not aware that traffic calming on a street has any impact on whether a, a street is selected for sidewalks. So um, that's another question that before I, you know, uh, guide you in the wrong, I would very much like to follow up with NDOT um, and confirm that. But yeah, I, I do not think that that would, there are two different programs. They have two different, you know, I'll go ahead and go back to, you know, here's what the traffic calming program looks at for how to spend that money and honestly choose the streets on a very competitive program. I think the sidewalk program has a very different set of criteria and then another also competitive program but i don't think whether there's traffic calming or not on the street would be one of those criteria but i would like to follow up doug with ndot to make sure that i'm not misleading anybody with that answer awesome thank you and the other one um oh sorry i'm gonna get it oh can you talk to me a little bit more about the voting is there a minimum amount of votes that need to come back is it two-thirds of people need to respond and then two-thirds of them need to be yes or are we looking for any amount of votes from the street that two-thirds need to be yes yeah thank you very much doug i want to make sure we're clear on this because this is a new policy as of two months ago and dot changed so i want to make sure we're over communicating so um everyone who has a property adjacent to rd avenue right and if you're on a corner lot if your address is on can like still if your property touches already you should have gotten a mail or advertisement for this meeting right here when we do a second meeting you should get a mail or advertisement and then when we go to votes you should get a mail or ballot if your property touches already avenue so the example we've been giving is let's say there's a hundred properties on already avenue i don't know what the number is let's just say it's a hundred um if only 10 people uh, 10 property owners vote of the hundred in over six weeks, only 10 people vote. I hope it's more, but if it's only 10, if seven of those 10 vote yes, then that is more than two thirds of property owners that respond by voting. And so that's a change that NDOT has made because it did used to be more of a percent of all property owners along the street. And there were some challenges uh, where petitions that were not hitting that 70% mark, it truly was unclear on do the, pro do the property owners not support traffic calming or are there some property owners that are simply not reachable or rarely home? And so this has been a change. And so it truly is the two thirds of the people that vote, but that's why NDOT's sending the mailers to advertisements to, the, to their doors for this meeting. 
That's why the mailers are being sent to their doors in the future. Um, so it's their choice on whether they are passionate or interested or not. Um, and they have six weeks to decide um, if they'd like to vote or not. Thank you. Yes. We had another question come through the chat. Um, so Harry mentioned um, speed cushions sound like a decent approach, but there would be eight along RD. I wouldn't want to pass over eight of them even as a resident. Would that just end up pushing traffic onto adjacent roads? I walk my dog along Sunnymead because it's already calmer, and if traffic ends up pushing there, it makes it more dangerous. Yeah, so that's a great question. Thank you very much for posting that. Um, th that that is that is the one of the challenges that I think as engineers we have um, when, when we try to solve one problem, are we creating another problem elsewhere? And the reality is sometimes that's the the, the difficulty in engineering. Um, so it is possible that a speech Christians and traffic calming go on Artie Avenue. It could possibly want people to not drive on Artie and they may switch to McAlpine or uh, or Sunnymead or Norvell. Um, now our hope is that people wouldn't speed on those streets. Um, it is, it's not the intent. The intent is there's a speeding issue on Artie. Here's a way to address that. But what we, do, what we are letting make sure neighborhoods know is if we, we don't, it's not our intent at NDOT to create another issue somewhere, but if it, if an issue does get created, we really encourage those neighborhoods and those streets to also apply for the traffic calming program so that we can also collect speeding data. We want the speeders to go away, but if for some reason the speeding gets better on Artie, but it gets moved to another street, we want that street to be in the program so we can also try to do something to that street. I, I will say um, one of the wonderful things about a street network like your neighborhood is you have so many options. You have so many roads that are sort of parallel to each other. Um, the challenge becomes if we so try to solve a problem like speeding on at RD, it also means there's a higher chance we might we impact the other streets. That's not the intent, but it is a possibility, and that's kind of the most honest answer. Greg, I want to touch on that if I could. This is more of a question for us to follow up with um, offline. RD, uh, most of it has a WeGo route, and I know that we coordinate, of course, with WeGo throughout this. <clears throat> but it also is that's kind of indicative of the fact that that it is a main. Um, even though it's a neighborhood street, it, it, it's a people use RD to get back deep into the neighborhood. And so people use like Riverwood, RD, um, uh, Stratford, and Stratford would be the street that's categorized correctly for, um, for that type of volume of traffic. But I guess my question is, since folks are used to doing this, and this is a very much needed change, would it be smart or should we consider um, helping folks understand what the best alternate route is. So for instance, saying, you know, calming measures in place, please take Stratford or, you know, making the, obviously it needs to be said better than that, but you get the gist. Right. I don't know if that's something we do or not, or what, what would be the best way? Cause I do think that absolutely adding a street into the program if needed is, is fine and it should be done, but what ways can we prevent the need for that? That's a great question, Councilmember Bend. And I will tell you that at NDOT, we certainly have those same types of discussions on what should we do, what should we, what, what's too much, where are we going too far. So um, I think I'll respond by saying we typically understand there's going to be a direct impact and an indirect impact when we do things like traffic calming. The direct impact is to really manage vehicle speeds on a street like Artie. We recognize the indirect impact is some cars may not want to drive over these speed cushions and may choose to do a different route. What we at NDOT want to try to make sure we do is that we're not identifying a street and saying, hey, start driving on this street more and call out a street because that may have more of a negative impact on that street. Now, if, you know, if we have different designations, if Artie's a local street and there's collectors, you know, that can kind of explain, hey, this is a collector street. It's meant for more traffic. But even if people have driveways and front yards off of a collector street, they may not want to have that. So um, I can certainly check with Jason and Brad at NDOT and ask about that, but um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we would identify an alternate route um, simply because we wouldn't want to do anything to encourage a different street to have more of an impact. Um, but I, I, I like that question. I appreciate that. So I do want to follow up with NDOT.
And again, these are just concept designs. Uh, you know, I think it, based on the feedback we hear, I think when we do have our second meeting, which we are running about 24 of these meetings right now with 24 streets, it's fantastic. So um, I think we would likely have our second meeting, uh, hopefully in late October, it may slip into early November, but that would be the time frame for when we would do a more detailed design. And what we, again, the, there's just a bunch of yellow trapezoids with the letters SC, and that's all we got. What we would show is a more zoomed in view of where these be, are being proposed. Um, so you can kind of see driveways and identifying the street numbers, the addresses um, of like the closest locations for where these would be proposed. So if you live along RD Avenue, you can't really tell exactly, is this right in front of your house or is it two doors down? we would prepare a more detailed design that actually helps answer those questions. Um, and that's ultimately what the contractor uses to build them. So that's what you would expect to see between this meeting and the next one. It's just something a little more detailed. Um, just want to kind of share that. Yeah, we're happy to keep discussing or brainstorming or answering any questions, you know? Is there a is there a reason why chicanes weren't like you've really leaned into speed cushions here? Can you talk we a little have. bit about chicanes and sort of like why those wouldn't be used in conjunction? Just as far as like I don't know, already being an entrance to the neighborhood and almost like a your drawings of chicanes are far more beautiful than the plastic bumps in the road. Absolutely. Um, I will just let me go ahead and bring that little little picture up. So I will tell you, uh, Doug. I just, in general, I think chicanes are cool. Um, you know, I just, I, I think they're really neat. So I do, we do look for opportunities to do them. Um, RD Avenue is narrow enough that to really do any sort of chicanes, I believe we would have to widen the road to create the room to build those kind of physical things to actually divert them. And as I mentioned, like this is not certainly not a road widening. We don't want to take people's front yards. We're not doing that in the traffic calming program. So for Artie Avenue, that's probably why chicanes, we're not going to be looking at them because there's not the room. It's a narrower road. Usually chicanes are for more of a, I'm going to say like a wider street that just has a lot more pavement to work with, if you will. Um, we have had a few of those in the program where we've looked at um, possibly some chicanes on wider roads, wider than Artie. But the other thing we found is um, people are also want their on street parking. And unfortunately, when you do the chicanes, you kind of have to create a no parking zone because you're doing that. And we've talked with some neighborhoods and some, oftentimes they say, you know what, we'd like to keep our, our on street parking, which is totally their right. And end up, we're not, we're wanting to work with the neighborhoods, not just force anything. So I think for RD, that's probably why is that when, when a street gets narrower, I, I have to go back and remember the measurements, but um, relative to some other neighborhood streets where it just seems like there's a wide right of, already is a little narrower, which sort of limits some of the options um, that traffic calming effectively can do. Awesome, thanks. Yes, sir. Well, any, are there any other questions or any other uh, thoughts? Um, we certainly don't want to rush anybody out. We're here as long as everybody would like. Brad, it sounds like we're not going to have any other questions. So I would just, you know, like to thank you and, you know, that we'll be in touch. I want the community to know we'll be in touch. This is the second of three meetings that we're having this week for District 7. So really great news that we're beginning to get these investments in our district. Um, there's also the very next one in line is for our district as well. So, um, and I, I believe it's McAlpine. So kind of our concerns about, you know, the streets nearby McAlpine is one as well. So um, there will be more coming and uh, that's a really good thing for us because again, this is the top priority that uh, you tell me we need to focus on. So um, stay tuned. If you're not on my email newsletter list, that announcement about my calling plan will be coming out in early September at the latest. And you can sign up for that at emily47.com, E-M-I-L-Y-F-O-R, the number 7.com. 
and make sure that um, you'll you'll see and let me know what things. <clears throat> excuse me. Let me know what things we can do better to make sure that we're addressing all of the needs to slow folks down on our neighborhood streets. It's really a huge priority for me. Nobody should be put in harm's way due to unsafe and unwalkable streets. So, uh, thanks so much, and uh, Brad and. Um, uh, Ariana, and um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now and let you say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Councilmember Benedict, and thank you, uh, everyone who joined us. Appreciate your time and look forward to uh, meeting with you again in, uh, in a few months. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.